Hello, I'm Patty Simpson with Simpson Math. In this video, we're going to look at the difference between continuous and discrete variables. So we talked about in the previous video that being able to describe our variables is important because once we've collected our data, we need to know what kind of math can we perform on the data. And knowing if it's a continuous or discrete variable helps us to determine what type of um, math we can perform on our variables. So with continuous and discrete, those two terms only deal with quantities. We're dealing with measurements or counts. And so they only refer to quantitative variables. In our previous video, we looked at quantitative and qualitative variables. All of our qualitative variables will be neither continuous nor discrete because these two terms don't deal with those qualities or categories. They only refer to quantities. So once we've decided that it's a quantitative variable, then we can categorize it as either discrete or continuous. Discrete variables are those where our data is countable, where we are actually, each number is distinct or separate, or we can actually count in order to um, record our data. Whereas continuous um, data is uh, data that takes on a range. It can be any value within an interval. So that, or you can think of it as being measured more and more precisely. I can get in between. If you give me two numbers, I can find something out in our population that can actually get in between those two measurements. So let's look at some examples of that quantitative data that is either discrete or continuous. Here we have some examples of discrete data. Now remember that discrete is a distinct, separate, or countable um, data. So here the number of children that you have, you can actually go out and count the number of children. You have three, or you have five, or you have seven children. You don't have two and a half children. Well, maybe if you're counting your husband, but no, you can actually count each one of those people. So you have a countable number of children. The population size of a, of a town is the same way. You can actually count the people there. Number of animals at the zoo, again, those are distinct numbers. Those are countable. The money in your pocket, you can take out your money in your pocket. And while that will maybe, you know, $3.04 so that it ends up being a decimal, it is still countable. Those are, it's a distinct amount. So those are examples of discrete variables. Here's some examples of continuous um, variables. Weight. Weight can be measured more and more precisely, as can height, time, speed, and temperature. For instance, I might say that I'm five foot, five inches. And someone else might come along and go, well, I'm five foot, five and a half inches. And someone else might come along and say, well, I'm five foot and measure it more and more and more precisely. I can get in between the two numbers. Or um, like with the, the time, as I'm looking to see, it looks like they cross the finish line at exactly the same time. But if I measure it more and more precisely, I can get in between two times. So these things can be measured with more and more precision or the answers, the numbers, the data I'm collecting can be collected on an interval. And if I say that someone weighed 160 pounds and someone else weighed or, uh, 161 pounds, there's someone out there in between that could be in between those two, 160 and a half pounds. So continuous is more and more precision, whereas discrete is very countable. And all of our qualitative variables, such as hair color or type of car you drive or the breed of your animal in your home, all of those things, those qualitative data are neither continuous nor discrete because it just doesn't, those two, those terms don't make sense unless it is a quantitative or some sort of quantity that we're writing down. Math made simple at Simpson Math. Thanks for watching.